Hello, welcome to Michelle Sews Again. I'm Michelle. Today I get to share with you my very first collaboration for So Purple to End ALZ 22. And I hope you're gonna be as excited about it as I am. I am partnering with the fabulous Angie from Fun Endeavors Tie-Dye. And she's the person that I've learned everything I know, which is this much compared to what she knows about ice dyeing. So if that sounds interesting to you, then please stay tuned. Okay, so I reached out to Angie when I first decided that I wanted to do these collaborations because I knew I was gonna be doing some ice dyeing for several of the collaborations and I thought, who better to partner with to kick off the ice dyeing adventure than Angie from Fun Endeavors Tie Dye because she is the one that I started watching first. There are three people that I watch on a pretty regular basis, but Angie was the OG for me and I learned Everything that I know about ice dyeing, which again, I don't know a whole lot, but what I do know, I learned from Angie. And I just get really inspired by her. She does a lot of different techniques. She does beautiful color palettes. And I highly encourage you to go and check out her channel if you are in any way, shape, or form interested in learning how to ice dye. She also does liquid dyeing. She does mostly ice dyeing, but she also does liquid dyeing. She does a lot of different techniques. She does, um, spirals, she does um, scrunches, she does geodes, which is the first time I saw a geode, I was just like, yes, that's for me. Um, she's been doing uh, wiffle ball dyeing, she's been doing gravity dyeing, which is super interesting. Um, I don't have the space to do that right now, but I can. you can bet your bottom dollar when I move into my house, I'm gonna have a spot for some gravity dyeing because it is super cool looking. Um, anyway, so what we agreed to do is that we're both going to do a purple themed ice dye. Um, we didn't put any other parameters around it, so I don't know if she's gonna, I, she always does pre-made garments because this is what, I think she does this for a living or at least a side gig. She sells the t-shirts and dresses and all the garments that she makes um, or that she dyes. So I don't know what garment she's gonna do and, I, and we're just gonna do purple themed. And so what I decided to do for mine is one of my collaborations, well, I actually have a couple of sweatshirt dress collaborations, which is fine by me because I will be wearing them nonstop this winter. Um, one of them is I am recreating, not recreating, I am making another Stylark Anderson knit dress. And that collaboration is gonna be um, posted on the 24th, which is a Saturday. So what I decided to do was, I wanted to do it the same kind of way that I did the first one, which what I did was I cut out all the fabric pieces um, before I sewed it up and I dyed each piece separately. So basically I took each piece and I folded it in a different pattern. I used the same color palette on all of the pieces, but I had different dye designs on each piece. And I wanted to do that again, but I did completely different folds. A, because I don't write down what I do. <laughs> I, I literally like I get to the table and when I start folding I just wing it and that's what I did this time too. So what you're gonna see in the um, in the following uh, video is I'm gonna walk you through my process for what I did after I cut the fabric out. So the fabric is a French terry that I bought on Amazon. Um, I probably not the highest quality but it's lightweight it's lighter than the fabric that I used for my Anderson last year which was more of a sweatshirt fleece this is a much lighter weight French Terry and I'm really excited about it because I think the pieces came out cool but I'll let you be the judge of that so let's jump into the tutorial tutorial I don't know if it's a tutorial as much as it is a die along with me um, and then I'll meet you back here at the end yeah, this piece is the back of the dress. So I want to do geode kind of ties for the front center and the back. And then I'm gonna do something different on the front side panels and the sleeves. So for the geode on the back, I think I'm just going to 
kind of start crumpling it up. I'm not gonna do like a real geode with like a center. I'm just gonna do the crumple and tie method. Um, so, and I have my sinew on a sinew puller. So let's see, let's just see how this works. I've never done this method before, so we'll see how this goes. And I'll speed up once I get started. Basically, I'm just gonna scrunch it up and then tie it off in places. And the sinew should keep any fabric that's underneath the sinew will keep it white. And then the dye will um, take anywhere where there's not sinew. And I'm just wrapping it around two or three times and then pulling it super tight. And you wanna be really random with where you put your lines. You don't want them to be evenly spaced, otherwise you're gonna end up with like a bullseye look. When I get to the end, I usually just cut that off and then I just use a crochet hook to pull it through. Honestly, I don't know if it's really necessary um, just because um, it usually stays where it needs to, but I just like to lock it in place. There we go. All right, so pull that through make a little knot and this piece is done. So now I'm going to do the same thing to the front piece, the front center, I should say. And I think I'm going to start this one from the side. Okay, so now I've got the two side panels and I think I'm just gonna do um, kind of like a shibori fold on this one. I'm gonna fold it in half lengthwise. And this is both pieces, the right and the left. I'm gonna fold it in half lengthwise. And it's not gonna be perfect as if you've been watching me a while, you know I don't aim for perfection anyway. Um, it's just kind of as in half as I can get it. And then I'm gonna do like a flag fold where it's like triangle to triangle, front then back. So this one I'm just going to tie up with a rubber band, if I can find one. Okay, so that's the shibori. That's the two side front. Okay, now I have the sleeves. And I think for the sleeves, let's see. For the sleeves, I think I'm going to do... Let's see, let's fold it down the middle and I'm folding it down the middle lengthwise. All 
again, not aiming for perfection. And I think I'm going to just do... I think I'm just going to do a fan fold right up, right up it. Uh, I don't want to go up sideways. Let's go up sideways. Yeah, so I'm going to start at the corner here, which is basically the center front of the sleeve. And I'm just going to pinch. Again, not aiming for perfection here. And I'm just going to pinch these little folds all the way to the edge. You will watch some tie-dye YouTubers that really, I mean, talk about precision. They've got little tools and everything to make sure all their folds are the same height. And, um, and that produces a really beautiful result. But I tend to prefer the more organic look anyway. All right, is that gonna work? I don't think that's gonna work. I'm gonna fold it in half one more time. There we go. And then I'm gonna do it from this corner here all the way up to the other corner. And I'm just gonna secure this with rubber bands. You can secure this with rubber bands or with kite string or even with sinew if you wanted some white lines. I'm just gonna do rubber bands. And these rubber bands will not leave white lines <coughs> like the sinew does, so the dye will still get underneath. Okay, and then my last piece is the pockets, which are inside the garment, so they don't need to be anything fancy, so I'm just gonna do a scrunch on these and wrap them up in a couple of rubber bands. So now we are ready to dye. And I'm gonna dye all of these in the same colors. So I'm gonna use all the same dyes I just wanted the ties to be different. So how, so the design is gonna be a little bit different on each of them, but they can all go in the same um, dye bath, if you will. So I'm putting them all, actually, I'm gonna take them out of this basket so I have room. All right. I'm gonna dye them in the muck, which basically means I'm gonna let the, um, the melted dye after the ice goes through, I'm gonna let this sit in that muck. And um, believe it or not, it holds, it's pretty fascinating how it holds the colors in the um, primary, um, the way that you've kind of like mapped it out, it kind of holds that design and then the muck just kind of fills in the gaps. So I have a whole bunch of colors. I will insert a picture of all the colors that I am thinking of using. I'm pulling in all my purples and a couple of blues. So I'm just gonna go random with these colors. And yeah, let's, let's do it. All of my dyes are from Dharma Trading Company. This first one is Wisteria. I have a lot of colors, so I'm not going heavy uh, with any of them. This color is Grape.
One thing that I always forget to do, but I'm gonna remember today, is to give it one last sprinkle of soda ash. I just, as much ice as I'm gonna be putting on here, that just helps to like make sure that the dye is gonna bond with the fabric. Okay, so I'm just making sure that the ice is pretty well layered. I'm gonna um, have to come back, I can already tell, with another layer of ice because I don't have it very fully covered. Um, but I'll meet you back here once this first layer of ice has melted. Here's just a quick look of what the fabric looks like now that the ice has melted and it's gonna sit here in the muck. Um, 24 hours from when the ice melted. So I'll probably do it. I'll probably rinse it out um, at the end of the night tonight, um, if not first thing in the morning. Okay, this has been um, sitting and batching as they call it for over 24 hours now. So I am going to rinse it out. Uh, then I am going to wash it and dry it in the uh, uh, washing machine and dryer. And then we'll come back and see what the pieces look like. Are you ready for the reveal? All right, so here we go. This piece is going to be the back of the dress. This piece is going to be the center front panel. Look at those colors. These are the sleeves. OMG, that came out so cool. Almost looks like a dental x-ray. These pieces are the two front side panels. And these are the pockets, which will be inside, so they don't really matter, but they came out cool anyway. Okay, so I don't know if you noticed, when I was doing the geode pieces, and I forgot to mention this in the video, um, as I was scrunching it up and tying it up, every time I'd pick up the fabric, I would move it around a little bit. And that's because I wanted each of the sections in between the tie to be different. So I wanted to make sure that my scrunches weren't kind of holding through the same pattern. So I'd pick it up and I'd move it around a little bit before I tied it. Um, and that just kept it super random and very organic. Um, yeah, so I did the geode on the front piece and the back piece, but I did it at a different angle. So the front piece, I kind of did it coming up from the corner, whereas the back piece was more coming up from the bottom. So they're similar looks, but at a different angle. I really love how those two front side panels came out with those shibori um, folds. Those came out super cool. And I think that the sleeve came out pretty cool too. That came out a lot uh, neater than I expected it to. So I'm really excited about putting this together and I hope that you will come back on the 24th and see what um, Joe from So Joey and I have put together for each of our Anderson knit dresses. So that is today's collaboration. Um, as always, I am going to list all of the collaborators and the dates and what project we're working on in the description box. I'm gonna list some uh, links for Alzheimer's information and I'm gonna link to the memorial tribute page for donations if you're interested in that. Um, 
in memory of my father. Um, if you didn't already catch it and you don't know what this video is about, it is the So Purple to End ALZ Challenge. I will link to my intro video in the end cards so that you can go and check those out. But be sure and go and check out Angie's video after this. I'm super excited. I can't wait to see what she made. Make sure that you tune in tomorrow for my collaboration with Adam from Adam Sews. We are making some cargo shorts. So... That's it, wherever you are. I hope the weather's amazing. I hope you're able to get some sewing in and I will talk to you tomorrow. Bye.